We'll pretty much have everybody on mute, and then when you want to speak up, raise your hand or uh, unmute yourself to, to talk. So, we we'll bring the meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order. First item up is going to be the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, 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 indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. Uh, before we get started, I need to read a notice, and some of us got some instructions in it. And then we'll start. Uh, Pelican Rapids School District general process for remote school board meetings. Uh, this will be uh, due to the current federal and state emergency declarations, the Minnesota directive to residents to stay at home, and guidance about limiting person to person contact due to COVID 19 pandemic. This meeting of the Pelican Rapids School Board is being conducted in accordance with Minnesota State Statutes 13B David. 021 meetings by telephone or other electronic means. Persons may monitor this meeting from a remote location by joining the media meeting via Zoom, which can be accessed on the school district website. School board members are reminded to mute their microphones or phone when they are not speaking. School board members wishing to speak should raise their hand and wait to be recognized by the chair. The chair will determine the order in which school board members wishing to speak will be recognized. When recognized, the board members should unmute the microphone or phone, speak, and then mute their device. All votes we take will be conducted by roll call. Each school board member should wait until their name is called before voting. Persons monitoring this meeting from a remote location may submit a comment to B. Ripley, B R I P L E Y at pelicanrapids.k12.mn.us. This meeting is being recorded. Access to the recording will be made available on the school district's website as soon as it is reasonably possible. And the next meeting, our next item up will be approve the meeting agenda. Do we have anything to add or subtract on the agenda? Ryan, anything to add? Okay. Jerry, anything we need to add? Not for my perspective. Okay. All right. I entertain a motion to approve the meeting agenda. I'll make a motion. I have a motion by uh, Mike and uh, Ann. You want to unmute? I'll second. And a second by Ann. Any discussion on the agenda? All those in favor signify by saying aye, but I'm going to call your name, Mike. Yeah, aye. Okay, Brenda? Aye. Greg? Aye. Ann? Aye. And Brittany? I think that was an aye. Yes, aye. Aye, okay. Agenda carries. Opportunity of visitors to address the board. Barb, did you get any comments? Mm -hmm. Next item up will be kind of a tribute to uh, Dr. Edwin Richardson. Um, if anybody has something they want to say, this is the time to say it. Um, I just want to say, you know, at today's meeting, uh, one of the item, uh, items on the agenda would have been to approve Dr. Richardson's superintendent contract. Uh, unfortunately, we're now charting a course on where we're going to replace this position. Uh, for a while, there was a great satisfaction knowing that it appeared we had the right people in the right places and really good things were happening in every corner of our school. The community staff and students were happy. School culture improved to levels we've never seen before. Dr. Richardson clearly had an influence, whether direct or indirect, that was contagious. His influence brought out the good in others that brought our district to where it is today. We know the direction we were moving, and we owe it to Dr. Richardson to continue on that path of to excellence. Mike, do you have anything you want to say? 
I do. Mine's more of a personal thing. Mm -hmm. I thought a lot about that, obviously, in the last two weeks, but uh, it's probably a story nobody's heard. Um, Ed was a wrestler in high school. I was a basketball player, and we always badgered back and forth. But um, Ed got beat out at his weight class. I think it was our junior year, and there was an open weight class, two classes up, so he had to gain weight. Would you remember this? I can remember him sitting for about 10 days in school with pop on his desk and food, and he, ate, he was miserable every day. And I'd walk by and say, how are you doing that? Good, good. And he was just so miserable, but that was that. I mean, he was the team player. He could... Uh, you know, he just did whatever it took and had a good attitude. It was, you know, it was great with us. Brenda? You come back to me. Okay. Ann, you want to unmute? So some of my favorite memories of interactions with Dr. Ed um, is in the hallways at the Viking Elementary School. I'm pretty sure he knew every single kid there by name, not because he had to, because he wanted to. He had such a passion for our students and their learning and well-being. He was awesome every day. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just got to know Ed when they moved back through my brother-in-law, Carl. And um, I've really never known anybody as excited about their job as him. I mean, he would come out on Thursday nights, and the last thing most people would want to talk about is their job. But I mean, he truly loved it. I mean, he was giddy when he got his superintendent job, and he was just amazing as a friend and, you know, in what he did here and he showed it and he's just really gonna be missed. Thank you. Whitney or Greg, have anything? Greg, go ahead and mute. You know, this this follows the lines of what Mike and Ann and Brenda had said. Cause it's it's who Ed was, you know, he was he was just a genuine guy. Um he was a smart guy, he was a strong guy, he was funny. And what I I think you know, when I think of Ed, I think of his willingness. And this maybe goes hand in hand with what Mike was saying about the big soda and all the food in the classroom. Is that right, Mike? Yes. You know, not everybody would be comfortable doing with that, but he didn't care about stuff like that. He allowed himself to be vulnerable, made him a better leader because it allowed people to feel extremely comfortable around him without diminishing any respect for him. And not everybody can pull that off. And Ed, Ed was able to have that perfect combination. And just like the rest of you, I will miss him dearly um, um, as, our, as our leader, um, as one of our leaders. Um, and I was so excited to see the future with with our district, with Ed, Ed in that superintendent position. And I miss him and, you know, I've just been thinking about his family and his friends and, and um, you know, Ed, you know, I, I was at the office today and I still have about five or six paper pineapple cutouts and you know, those are things I you, you got to keep around because those are the people that inspire others. And 
And I know a pineapple by itself isn't going to encapsulate everything that Ed brought to the table, but in a way it does because that was his thing. That was his unique way to bring attention and recognition to other people aside from himself for doing great things above and beyond what they're supposed to do. And he just set a great example for, for me and I think uh, members of our entire school district and I'll miss him. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Okay, I'll finish it up. Um, hard to just say a couple words. I know we could all sit here and talk for hours about it, but um, one thing is our job as school board members is not always easy. But Ed made it easy. He made it enjoyable. And um, we can work through it. Thanks. Thank you. Jerry, did you have anything? You know, I think I, I'm on the agenda here as reports and I'll make some comments then if that's okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Next item up will be to establish the Dr. Edward Richardson Scholarship Fund. And I believe uh, your hand might have a little bit of information on it or and if you have any comments on it you go ahead on your unmute I, uh, I had reached out to lauren to see if maybe we could do something like this and it was actually a pretty quick process it was a, a yes the same day uh, rudy i believe is is working to to get that to make that happen and just want to thank everybody for supporting that idea. Okay. So I, guess I would make a motion to establish the Dr. Edwin Richardson Scholarship Fund. Okay, we have a motion by Anne. A second. A second by Brenda. Do we have any discussion on the uh, establishing the Dr. Edwin Richardson Scholarship Fund? And Greg, go ahead and mute. Thank you for everybody's efforts coordinating the the scholarship. <clears throat> Any other discussion? You know this discussion. I'm going to do a roll call again. All those in favor would signify by saying aye, Mike. Aye, aye. Brenda. Aye. Greg. Aye. Aye. Brittany? Aye. Ann? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Next item up will be the consent items. Uh, item A, approved notice to hold teleconference meetings pursuant to Minnesota statutes 13 D David 0021. B boy approved board meeting minutes March 16th, 2020 meeting. C financial claims and March bills. D treasurer's report. E accept donations. The PRHS SAD. Grove Lake Lutheran's Men Group $150. To the DAPE program in memory of Ruth Holmgren's mother. Orlean and Pat Rudy $20. And then item F, approve the first food service agreement for 2020-2021 with Cooperative Purchasing Connection. And Brian or Rudy, have anything to add to that before I ask for a motion? Can I ask what the DAPE stands for? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 
All right, perfect. Yep, so uh, folks just wanted to ask a little bit of background regarding what the food service agreement is, uh, just the background on it. Uh, we participate under the pool with Lakes Country Service to be able to meet all the procurement processes that the state and USDA requires us to have. Uh, there is a certain basket of goods that we have to purchase in addition to buy American. And by joining this pool, we get better pricing. Um, so year over year, we renew it. Um, this is just another uh, piece to that. Um, the milk bids will become later on in June, uh, which is very different than this. Okay. Thank you. Anything else to add, Rudy? Looks like he muted. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent items. Motion by Brenda. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Mike. All those in favor signify by saying aye, but I'll do a roll call. Greg? Aye. Brittany? Aye. And Ann? Aye. Brenda? Hi. Hi. Mike? Hi. This time I have Carrie. Uh, next item up will be uh, business items. Item A will be appoint Gerald Ness as interim superintendent pursuant to the terms and conditions of the existing agreement between Lakes Country Service Cooperative and Pelican Rapids Public Schools. Appointment of NEF shall continue until further action of the Board of Education. And uh, so what this is, is we all know Jerry Ness as uh, being a mentor for Ed. We've already had an existing contract with Lakes Country Service Co-op. Uh, so this is kind of a natural fit. And I appreciate the legwork Jerry has helped us out with to this date. Um, and we'll get a little bit further here in the next item up with the delegation of duties after that. But um, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Gerald Ness as interim superintendent. I'll second that. Okay, second by Mike. Any discussion? So basically, uh, okay, we'll talk about it. So, any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving Gerald Ness as interim superintendent signify by saying aye. And I'm going to take a roll call. Mike? Aye. Aye. Brenda? Aye. aye. Ann? Aye. Greg? Aye. Brittany? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Next item up will be to approve Brian Korf as acting administrator for the Pelican Rampant School District. And uh, what this is gonna be is, uh, we're statutorily required obviously to have an interim superintendent and Gerald Ness will be performing those duties, the signature and, and all that. Acting administrator is going to be uh, Brian Korf. Um, We'll be doing the daily duties here, uh, some of the uh, interim superintendent duties. Um, Jerry Ness, now that you're an interim, do you got uh, something you want to kind of add? <laughs> you know, I, I think, uh, yes, thank, thank you for that. Uh, and, and I think the biggest thing is, you know, my office is going to be in my home, so I'm not going to be in the office daily, but Brian and uh, Derek and Rudy are in contact with me all the time. I, you know, basically my roles make sure uh, all state federal regulations, make sure we don't miss any motions, uh, help, uh, you know, help out where I can oversee. And, and then, uh, you know, Brian with the lead there, I think a big part of it is you need a district spokesperson. So I just think uh, Brian from the district along with John as the board chair, um, be able to, uh, have those uh, items and and like I say so we'll, we'll we'll lean on each other both ways to make sure we get everything uh, completed uh, correctly. Thank you. 
I'll entertain a motion to appoint Brian Korf as acting administrator for the Electronic School District. Uh, Greg, Greg raises his hand. Do you want to mute? You're making the motion? So moved. Okay. Motion by Greg. We have a second. Ann? I'll second. Second by Ann. Okay. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Any other discussion on that? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye by roll call. So I'll start on the screen. Ann? Aye. Greg? Aye. Brittany? Aye. Aye. Brenda? Aye. Aye. Mike? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item up will be administrative reports. Uh, we have elementary school activity director, uh, Derek Nelson. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, enrollment, we're at 426, so up to from March. Uh, interesting thing with that is Mrs. Westby got a student uh, when she was in Florida, so has never met the student, but is in her <laughs> class. So. Um, so we're getting through it. So um, Roman is up, that's good. Uh, I guess on behalf of the activities and the elementary, why don't we give our condolences to the Richardson family. Dr. Richardson was a great supporter for athletic teams and all kids. He would not only attend about every home game, but he was at a lot of away games as well. Uh, one day in the elementary, Lunchtime, all of a sudden he walks in the cafeteria in a big unicorn outfit. The first grade teachers down in their classrooms thought there was a fight or a shooting, something happening in the cafeteria because all the ruckus and they can run it down only to see Dr. Richardson being mobbed by all these kids. Um, you know, we always say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But Mrs. Westby was able to teach him the Happy Friday song that he did bring over to high school and would sing that <laughs> as he walks around Friday morning's cafeteria. So um, we want to just thank Dr. Richardson for everything that he did and thank his family for sharing him with us. Uh, he will be deeply missed. Uh, distance learning update uh, from basically what I'm hearing is teachers are missing the kids. Kids enjoy doing a lot of their homework in their pajamas, but they enjoy see, missing their teachers and, and are missing seeing their friends. Um, some good things that are coming out of it is a lot of our staff is learning a lot about Excel, RAS Kids, Google Hangouts, Zoom meetings. Um, they're getting pretty good at those items. And we've had a lot of our families get connected to the internet. We're not hooked up before. So um, they are missing the face-to-face, -face, but I know a lot of them are saying they enjoy that personal time when they connect on a daily basis. And uh, some of them are getting to others' classes, some of them individually. Um, it's not quite the same, but it is what it is and we're getting through it. Mrs. Westby, anything you would like to add on that? Um, I'd like to really thank our cooks, custodians, our parents that are helping out with the meals and club bikes. We're serving around 350 meals a day. There's a bus that goes in town and then four routes out in the country to deliver meals. Um, and all those people are helping out, the cooks prepare, the custodian parents will jump in vans on the bus, deliver the meals, and also the parents helping out the club bikes that is very much appreciated, um, all the work that they're doing. We have our elementary opening. Right now we have 27 applicants. We're looking at interviewing next Friday for that position. Uh, as far as activities, everything is on hold till May 4th. We're thinking that we'll 
learn more this week about what's coming uh, after May 4th. So, any questions? Greg. <coughs> no questions, Derek. Thanks for your report. And I should have mentioned this earlier too, but between, I know Derek and Lauren and Brian and John and a number of you, um, many of who played so many different parts, the, the way things were coordinated from the school to show our community's appreciation for Dr. Richardson was absolutely phenomenal. And um, I know there's a lot of people that work behind the scenes to connect those dots, but what was done was an amazing and fantastic thing. And I just wanted to express my appreciation. Thanks, Derek, and the rest of the team. Uh, that being said, there were a lot of people that helped make pineapples, made signs. Um, I know if I said name and names, I'll leave people out, but there's so many people that contributed, and that's what makes our community so great. So thank you to all those people. Hey, uh, enrollment, we are at 420 students at the end of March. So we're down a little bit from the beginning of the school year. We were at 425 to start the school year off. Um, one thing to add to my report is an art opening. We have an art opening here, um, 0.87 at the high school. And we're taking applications at this time. Uh, we'll hopefully we'll interview in the next two to three weeks. Uh, so two big items, prom and graduation prom right now, we postponed until we hear more. Um, see what uh, outcome is there. And graduation, our goal is to have graduation. We just don't know what that's going to look like right now and when. So we'll kind of hear what's going to happen here for the remainder of the school year and then see how it's going to look in June and then uh, come up with a solution for graduation. But we will recognize our seniors. MCA testing, there's no MCA testing that was canceled. Uh, distance learning, it's been a learning experience for all of us, for uh, teachers, students, and uh, parents. So um, we've had some bumps in the road here with a few things, but we're working them out. Overall, it's been going, I would say, pretty good. It's not perfect, but we're trying to make the best out of the situation that we can control. So uh, mid-quarter is this Friday. And... Um, that was changed just because of our two weeks there. We didn't have uh, any uh, student contact, so with our planning, so we changed it. We ch went to a week. It was April 17th. We went to the April 24th. And uh, thank you, thank you to all staff, uh, students, community members for all their support last week, uh, helping out with everything. Uh, and uh, it was uh, very well done. Showing our appreciation to Dr. Richardson and support to the family. Dr. Richardson, great boss, great leader, great person. Um, gonna be greatly missed. And I just wanna say behind every great leader is a great spouse. And I wanna say thank you to Mrs. Richardson for sharing Dr. Richardson with us. Um, he spent a lot of evenings, times away from home, um, at events, activities, and um, but we do uh, appreciate for uh, sharing Dr. Richardson with us. Any questions? Thank you. Brian. Uh, All right, a few things I want to say thank you to Dr. Ed too. He truly was awesome to work for and with. A little story on the Derek Unicorn story. Uh, I was headed somewhere to get some, something downtown and up in the truck, I look over at the parking lot and I see this thing standing by this car. And uh, I'm like, what, who is over by uh, Dr. Richardson's car? So I drive over there and roll the window down 
and I said, hey, if you see any suspicious characters around here, call the office right away. And he's in this blow up unicorn thing. And he goes, I'll keep my eye out. <laughs> and that was him. That's really what's it. You won't be missed. Uh, we're working on summer LTFM um, stuff. I was hoping to have approved tonight, but we got enough things to go over. We'll do it in May. Um, we don't have anything that's really pressing for time as far as um, a big co uh, coordination of uh, lowering or anything like that. But we do have quite a few items and there'll be uh, good updates to our school district. We're also working on uh, summer maintenance items, um, some routine things and just some uh, catch up things too. Our custodial crews um, are working at both schools. We have a crew at the elementary that every night they go in and uh, sanitize after club bikes and um, the cooks being around, office staff, and just people being around. So uh, the area and the, around the cafeteria, around the kitchen, the club bikes room, a couple times we've had to move to another room because they've had a um, greater number of kids. Those get sanitized every night after the uh, after they're out of there. So they're doing a really good job of that. We also have crews over here that uh, come in and sanitize the office and other areas that are being used. So we're, we're being vigilant on that and trying to do our part. Um, one thing is the street project that last month that I uh, informed you guys about that extends from third, which is between the fire hall and the school, wraps around the first, behind the high school and over to fifth on the south side of the high school. That may start earlier due to the fact um, if we do not resume school, they might be able to tear into that. Plus with our earlier spring or, or more average spring, I guess. So um, we're, when we find out um, from Brian, Jerry, whatever on your guys' meetings, um, we can give those guys to go ahead and here and the whole project. So, um, the thing with that is, we hopefully we get a sooner end date on that, that it doesn't take all summer long. So, anybody have any questions? Yeah, yeah. Shada is uh, canceled for this year, so that was our big event, and then we'll see when we can resume um, using uh, the facilities for weight training. Um, and other practices and stuff like that. But um, talking to Derek and to Brian, we can access all that stuff from the east side of the building, through door two or three. So nobody will be in the construction area. But we'll have to wait till we get the green light on that. Okay, thank you. Three, uh, you're next. So you want to pop in? All right, can everyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Perfect, how about um, uh, see my screen? No. Yeah, you're still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How about now? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, Th that, this is my better smile right here. <laughs> so uh, from a treasurer's report, uh, we continue to receive uh, uh, the state aid uh, today in our Miss Laugh account uh, for the March uh, for the month of March we received uh, just a little over a million dollars, of which I took six hundred and sixteen thousand uh, to meet all of our obligations. At the end of the month, we have three point three million dollars sitting in our investment accounts. Uh, Miss Laugh put out a big statement that even though the economy is not doing the best, they're doing everything to diversify the risk to make sure that we don't lose any potential dollars, which is really good to hear. Uh, in our OPEP trust account, uh, we started with uh, 114,000. Um, again, we took a little bit of a hit. Uh, we, we made $13 in dividends, but we lost $20 in fees. <laughs> so we lost a little bit in our investment there. Uh, overall, in our investments, we're sitting pretty well. Um, again, I keep reminding you guys month after month that $2, $2 million out of the MISLAF investment account belongs to the aid anticipation, which will pay back in September of this year. 
in terms of the general fund and all of its obligations, uh, for the month of March, we had $572,000 in accounts payable. That included all, all, all checks and wires that uh, run through the district. Uh, in terms of payroll, we had $358,000. Um, there's a little bit of a, of a increase, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, in this particular payroll, uh, we paid the settlement from the teach, uh, settling the teachers' negotiation. Uh, negotiation. So that's why you see that that little bit of a fluctuation there. Uh, terms of cash, uh, pretty moderate. Uh, you see that cash on hand was negative twenty-eight thousand dollars. Don't be alarmed. I made a wire transfer to make sure that we're never in the negative. Just the board report shows that. Uh, petty cash, cash account, uh, not much of activity. We started with $2,200. Uh, we spent $1,600, and right now it's sitting at $561. Uh, the primary use of this particular account is to pay reps because we have no spring activities coming up. I think the account's going to be dormant for uh, the next couple, two or three months. Uh, do you guys have any questions on the summary of our cash flow before I jump into the rest of the report? Uh, collateral report, uh, again, uh, we have substantial collateral backed up by our bank to make sure that in case of default, uh, uh, our money is guaranteed. Um, this is very crucial at this point in time as everybody is uh, a little bit of panic regarding the, 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 just the, the status and structure of our overall economy. So uh, we have substantial collateral by the bank. Uh, Journal entries that we've made for the month of March, uh, the primary one you see here for safe schools. Um, the shift that you see in, in this particular one is that we open up a social Lutheran, uh, Lutheran social services account at the district level rather than at the building level um, because our social, uh, social service uh, um, uh, personnel serves the entire district, both buildings, not one specific. So really this is just the shifting the cost. Uh, the big one that you see here that says move to fund aid balances, uh, due to GASB 84 coming out, uh, we're also required to go through every single one of our scholarships that will eventually go into fund one. So what does that mean? It means that in fund eight, we can only keep scholarships where we have a fiduciary responsibility. There is a legal agreement that somebody brings and then we sign and we have very little administrative review. The majority of the scholarships are gonna have their own reserve account moving forward in the general fund. Uh, and there's not gonna be much of a difference. They're now just going to be reported in fund one. Uh, I've been going through a lot of uh, old records of ours and and I think there's just two that we have a fiduciary paperwork, um, the shipper scholarship, um, and then another one that I can't think of the top of my head. But that is the big journal entry that you see there. Uh, lastly is all the payables. So this is all the payables that went through uh, through the month of March. Again, pretty normal, uh, pretty normal month. Uh, one thing that Ed asked me to um, share with you guys was he wanted to start tracking every single cost related to COVID-19. Um, and can everyone see the Excel spreadsheet right now? Okay, so we've been tracking and monitoring it pretty closely. Um, since schools closed down and the first governor orders went out, um, we've paid out in salary about $175,000. Um, that is for those uh, employees that are hourly and the governor gave us the okay to continue to pay. So that's what we're tracking. Uh, we're excluding teachers from here because we have a, a, a contract in place. Uh, the other thing that we're tracking is food. So far, we spent over $13,000 in foods, which we are then submitting claims to the summer food program as a waiver. Um, very unique process. It's never been done and still a lot of, a lot of hiccups going on. Uh, two days ago, Trudy and I, our food service director, went in there to try to submit 
all the meal claims and the system crash because the entire state is trying to go in there and do the same thing we are. So it'll be, it'll be a little bit of time before we get everything situated. Um, supplies, we've spent just a little over 3,000 in supplies. This goes anything from cleaning supplies that, that Trevor and his team needs to keep our, our building sanitized to whatever else was, was brought to my office with the title COVID on, on top. Uh, equipment, very little, about $189. I believe this was just a, 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 a paperback purchase order for a teacher that needed it for those students who don't have access to internet. Um, that's what that was. Uh, in terms of transportation, all the gas receipts that came in this month total up to about $580. The one thing I haven't accounted for is the number of miles that we're putting on our vehicles. That will be more of a year-end report. Um, but again, you know, we're, we're trying to be as diligent as we can to track every expense. So hopefully there is a federal relief program down the road where we apply for some type of reimbursement. That would be something you need to see, but um, this is just for you guys um, to be aware how much we're spending on this particular, uh, particular uh, uh, pandemic problem that was, that was raised. Um, that's all that I have for you guys, other than to thank the school board for being uh, so supportive during this time and uh, for Jerry to, uh, to call us that morning and say, hey, guys, I'm here. I, I'm ready to go. What do you need? And uh, really for all the, all the community, it was, uh, it was beautiful to see that. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. Yes. Yes, uh, you can hear me as well? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> well, again, uh, first of all, certainly I'd like to offer my sympathy and condolences to you as individual board members. You get very close to a superintendent in a hurry, and, and um, it's uh, very, very tragic. Also to the Richardson family and, and the district and the community as a whole. Ed was, uh, he was a lovable man. He was a good guy. Good guy. Uh, I got to know it a little bit through the mentoring, like we talked a little bit about, and and I, I believe you, the board passed a motion in August to um, go out for an operating levy, and uh, superintendents kind of live and die on an operating levy. That's a lot of work and, and a lot of effort, and that's basically um, 101. Uh, we, we went and, and crafted the message, and he went out, and along with Rudy and the board and, and the community to pass that, and that is... Um, it's a testament to the community's support for you. So, and, and his leadership, I think, was uh, very well received in that. Um, and and uh, just moving on into the, your administrative team, the amount of time I've spent with them, very impressed, uh, very, uh, a lot of empathy for the family, the community, and, and we, I keep pushing them to, they need to step back and reflect and take time for themselves as well, take care of them. Uh, self so they can take care of others. So you really have to keep pushing them to, uh, to think of themselves a, a, as well. Very compassionate group of uh, administrators. Um, just a little bit of intro of myself. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask. You know, I've been a, I was an educator for 40 years. I've been retired for a year. That's a pretty good gig. I kind of like it. Um, and, and I was uh, the past 13 years uh, superintendent at Fergus Falls. I was at West Central Area 15 years as a principal and, and then five years as a superintendent there. So 18 years as a superintendent and um, we're living on Lake Lida and my wife and I uh, live in there for the past uh, six years, I guess now, but we've had a family cabin out here since 1959. So not many of you grew up in Lawndale, <clears throat> in Lawndale with me. There wasn't many of us there. So, so Pelican Rapids is home, and uh, I, 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 I'm glad I can help you uh, through uh, an unfortunate time, uh, to be honest. So if there's any questions, uh, that's pretty much all I, I had right now. Yeah, Brittany, any questions? We seem to have lost Greg, but I think he's going to be back soon. Yeah, we're trying to get him back soon. We're kind of almost done. Um,
Ann, did you have something? Oh. <clears throat> Were we going to adjourn this Zoom meeting when we we're done and then start a new one or just continue with this one? Continue? Okay. All right. Well, while we wait for Greg, uh, upcoming meetings, we have a work session following this meeting. And uh, then we have a finance committee meeting May 4th at 5 p.m. So does that still work for you, Brittany? She's nodding yes. Brenda, I believe you were on it too. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have it down too. We have a work session May 4th at 6 p.m. And we'll kind of spell out a timeline in our work session on what we'll be doing on, on May 4th. And then regular May meeting, May 18th at 6 p.m. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. This meeting, and we'll start. We have a motion by Ann. Make a motion. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, motion by Ann. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Mike. Any discussion on adjourning? Hearing no discussion, all those favor signify by saying aye. I'll take a roll call. Brittany? Aye. Ann? Aye. Okay. Brenda? Aye. Aye. Mike? Aye. Meeting is adjourned. I think we'll take a few minutes and wait till uh, Greg gets back on board here before we start the work session. Should we take five or 10? Do anybody need a break? Unmute, Brittany, what do you think? Five minutes? Okay, we'll be back in five minutes. So let's be back at uh, 6.55. Does that work? Okay. Yep. Okay. Can we be muted right now? Or? Yeah. May fourth is uh, the the admin team in the morning will review this um, and give any thoughts. And then there's a the budget meeting at five and then the work session at six. And basically you'll be um, uh, selecting the candidates then. So then that next day, May 5th, uh, we'll get all the interviews lined up for the 11th, 13th. Uh, we'll be able to put in times. Uh, 14th, 18th doesn't give you much time negotiating a contract. Uh, then your regular board meeting, you'd approve it. That would be the, the goal. Um, don't be surprised if that contract doesn't get negotiated. It, it might take a few extra days. You might have to have a special meeting, you know, uh, just a one item come in, approve and, and move on. So that's um, something there. Um, I'm scrolling down farther down to the bottom now um, and looking at questions. Um, I have semi-finalist questions. And then I also have finalist questions, and I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there. Um, any any thoughts um, before we don't jump into the questions and review questions? Don't hear anything. Did everyone get an email from me inviting to take a Google survey? Yes. It, okay. Um, so what the survey is, it's, it's, it's a Google form is what it is. It's a Google survey. And basically what you're doing, uh, if you, if you get into the form, you can just click on it. So when I send it to you, it'll just be right in your email and you just click on fill out the form. 
and and you'll run in there uh, you'll, you'll just select who you are so we can sort this no one's going to know how you rate the candidate i'll just i'll have that info but we won't be sharing that with anybody else so then you just assign the letter so if it's candidate a b c whatever you fill that in and then you rate them on leadership vision instructional leadership communication skills character uh, their business uh, managers, you know, finance, budget, facilities, transportation, those things, community focused, and then your overall impression. And this is all just paperwork. You're just seeing their PDF paperwork. And then, and then do you recommend to interview or not? And so once you send, when you fill that out and just hit send, it comes to me and, and I'm then able to collate all that data. The Google Forms actually collates the data that we'll, I'll be able to share with the whole board. So we, so sometime uh, Monday morning, I'll probably be sending you a spreadsheet of where everybody's at and, and so we'll be able to keep uh, a good track of, uh, of everybody that way. Any, any questions on that? Nope. nope. So, so John, um, you know, the way I've got it set up here, I'm, I'm way down, uh, I'm on the interview, the semi-finals inter interview questions. Uh, the, the, way, the way I have this document set up, so on the left-hand side, it's the SV school board. So I will, I'm, I'm a, I'd like you all to be involved in asking questions. So what I would do is uh, do a little random draw for the first six, uh, and then after that, just continue with that same group. So if we have Ann and Brittany and Greg and so forth down the line, and, and then uh, what I'll have in here across the top where it says candidates' names, we'll have all six candidates' names here. So then you'll have one sheet to work with when you're, when you're uh, going through the interviews. Because the, the whole idea is you want to be able to focus on the candidate and reading their body language, and it's hard to do in a Zoom. Um, uh, I've noticed I'm twitching a lot, by the way, and looking around. So, I did, uh, but uh, so so that way uh, we go through these questions, and uh, that's that's kind of the whole thing. Go through the questions, have them at the end. I always have an opportunity that they can ask <laughs> questions. <clears throat> excuse me for the board, and and then also I, I guess I like I always like to ask a summary question where all right why should we hire you as superintendent and, and use that as a summary uh, so that you can kind of wrap up uh, everything. Um, but I guess, uh, John, I'll let you, how do you want to do this? Do you want people to, um, it's hard to wordsmith via Zoom and 10 people. Um, do you want to have the questions now for a few days and then email the team, the, the, you know, the whole, uh, school board or I guess uh, I'm open to how, how to do this uh, to finish off the questions. I, I'd like to have this done prior to May 4th because that's going to be a busy time. So if we could get these questions nailed down, that would be uh, a next big step for us as a group. I'll be quiet. I'm going to mute. No. <laughs> You know, I've kind of glanced through them. I, do we see a lot of changes needed, or do we have to? Gary, you can unmute. Do we do we need to narrow it down to less questions, or do you think this is a proper amount? You know, I, I think with us going to an hour and fifteen minutes, uh, I I think we're good. I, I think we'll be able to do that, and you know, and that's part of the uh, the interview process too. Can they succinctly give an answer to you or not? Um, but I think an hour and 15 minutes, uh, you know, probably I'm hoping for like an hour five of questions at the most. And, and then you get 10 minutes in between candidates. Um, I think that's, I, I think it's doable. We are the ones, just us ask the questions, not the admin team. Is it just the school board asking questions or the admin as well? Yeah, no, I, I think it would be just you. We'll just rotate through the board. Okay. When we did this uh, with our last search, like for each candidate, a school board member read the same question. So there was consistency. Is that yeah. important? That is correct. So in this document, if you're looking at it, 
So question number one, I'll put the initials or the name of the board member that's going to be asking the question, and you'll do that for all six candidates, if, or how many ever you pick to interview. Yep. So then you can kind of word, I always kind of like to rephrase things, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's easier that way. Make it your own type of question. The, the key is you have to ask the same question of everybody. You, you can't be messing around and switching questions. I think we kind of just went down the line how we're sitting as far as what order the questions got answered. This will be different. Or asked. This will be different. Well, it'll be different with Zoom. Uh, yeah, so Zoom will be an issue uh, as far as that type of thing, but I, it won't. It won't matter. You got to keep the candidate guessing a little bit. Why don't you just go down there and put initials by and let us know? Yep. Yeah, just want to run us run down the list and uh, yes. put it down there. And yeah, I, I just didn't know if you wanted one. You know, some people have one person ask, ask the questions, but I but I think it's, uh, I think to get a connection with that candidate, I think you should be asking them, you should be directly talking to the candidate at some point. Each board member should be, I think. And, and that gives you that opportunity. You'll probably each get three questions the way it looks. So it'll, it'll work out well. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna just clarify, cause you just said Zoom, but like the candidates are gonna be here. And no. is it on Zoom? The Minnesota School Board Association, everything's required to be on Zoom. Okay. Yeah, make it very hard. We'll we'll find out at the last minute here probably if they make a change on that. But the, uh, the school board association is uh, every, everything has to be done Zoom, and I don't know if that means one person or two people or it can be in the school board uh, room there, the district office room, or or all of us have to be Zoom. I'll, I'll do some research on that and find out. I think if you're practicing the social distancing rules, I think you're okay. Uh, probably, but I believe all candidates have to be on, on Zoom or online somehow. Could we put them on stage at the uh, Fine Arts Auditorium and then we sit in, uh, in the audience? And you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do some research on that. I'll, I'll find out if we could really, really distance. Um, I don't know, so. It might be pretty intimidating too. <laughs> spotlight on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The hot one, the heat lamp. Um, yeah. And then yeah. uh, on, the top, on the top there, how will the scoring rubric be? It'll be like five, four, three, two, one. Yep, it's right at the very top. It says uh, right below the date there. So five is the highest, one's the lowest. And basically, it's uh, five is uh, distinguished or. Uh, you know, uh, excellent uh, beyond, and then one would be unsatisfactory, I think would be your, your guide. Okay. Now, if we don't have any issues with these questions, should we just move on, or do you want us to continue to take a look at them and maybe tweak some if we think we need to yeah. tweak them? That, that that's up to you. Um, so I, I guess if you're, you know, I, I want to make sure you've had a chance to look at them. Uh, and, and probably it's more of what's missing rather than what's there. I think they're all, you know, they're, they, these are, you know, we didn't write them uh, other than a few of, about Dr. Richardson and, and diversity. Um, so I think the questions are solid, but it's what's missing for you, you as a board that isn't being asked is probably what I would be looking at. And then, so if you, you know, do we want to set a, a date that you have to get questions to me or, or suggestions? And I, I'm guessing anything that you send, we can weave into something here or slightly modify a question here uh, to make sure we get asked what, what you want. Um, Yes, I like how they, the ones that are stated kind of almost look like chronologically just kind of lead into, I don't know, pretty important points to us. <laughs> well, covering. thank you. Thank you. That was the intent. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah.
because when I when I first saw these and I had questions in my head, all the ones that I had in my head were here. Yeah. So I can't think of anything that 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 I'm we're missing. I guess my only comment would be is number 15. If we had something different, that would be one I'd probably replace since we've just been through all of that. We don't foresee that in our hopefully in our future. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're right. This is Greg here. I, unless it's extremely material, I mean, I'd like to have. I'd like to consider a deadline um, to review and just, you know, maybe for many of you, you're, you're confident with regard to what's in place now, but I don't know I'd, if we have time and it's, and it's not going to be material as to um, the integrity of the process we got to follow. I mean, would the end of the week, uh, we can offer our comments to Jerry. Or oh, yeah. that, I don't know how, whatever approach, I don't know what approach would be the. No, that, that is, take, but. Greg, that is fine. In fact, even into next week is, but I want to be able to come to you with uh, all the completed questions and we fill in the names on May 4th. That's really the end game there. So, so I, I want you to be able to read these, review these. Um, and I'll, I'll beg to differ you on that one, the one that you commented on, because, uh, it really what you're looking through there is their communications. It's really a communication question and, and uh, how they went through the process and, and different things, uh, you know, but we, we can certainly change it to, you know, referendums or other communication pieces that that's kind of what we're trying to get across here, but, but uh, we can tweak any of these. That's for sure. I can respect that. No. Yeah. If you give me Jerry till if you give me May fourth, that means May fourth. I'm going to be sending you some uh, thoughts on some some questions. So that's why for me, I mean, I I don't want to bog down the system because I haven't looked through them, and um, I I was just thinking, I guess personally for my own procrastinating self to speed up that deadline at least from my perspective. Maybe everybody else can. Yeah. Uh, 4 37 on, <laughs> on Friday for you, Greg. Everybody else can, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I just, yeah, that, you know, the sooner I the better. That, right. I, I just, you know, I know we're doing a, a pretty tight timeline here. Uh, it's aggressive time, right? But it's very doable. So, uh, so I want to move forward, but I don't want to rush. I want to be quick, but I don't want to rush you. So I definitely want you time to read these questions and, and uh, own them yourself. Uh, so, so please do. And so end of the week, early next week would be ideal. So like by next Monday would be perfect. That sounds good. Otherwise it'll probably get close to crunch time when you get towards the end of the week, the second week with uh, all the apps coming in and nipping and tucking things there yeah that's that's what i think is that we're going to start getting busy with apps we hope and and uh getting that information in so so early next year real quick yeah. sorry greg i stepped on you um mike and I, I i can't see who's talking but i'm i think i can distinguish the voices but sounds like mike forsgren john carger and peterson Brenda, I haven't heard from you, I don't think, with regard to the questions. I just, to, get, to give myself some perspective, because I'm more concerned with how they answer a question, um, more so than the nuts and bolts with the actual question itself. So I'm not looking to dissect every single question by any means. But um, with regard to all five of you, all five board members except me, do the questions appear to be pretty close to what makes sense to all of you in light of what we're we're doing in terms of uh, interviewing. Yes. This is John. Yes, I kind of do, but 
I do want to at least take a couple of days and just kind of, if I think of something here down the road now that we're brainstorming, uh, so I do think we could have a few days to make sure they're good. Well, it doesn't sound like anything jumped out at anybody in terms of, I know, Ann, you had made reference to 15, but um, Jerry had given his response and it sounded like maybe you've become more comfortable with 15, but um, as far as everybody else is concerned right now, nothing, nothing extreme jumps out at any of you in terms of the questions or any omissions. Nothing jumps out at me right now, no. No, not for me. Okay. Thank the you. admin Thank you. team still there? Brian, Eric? Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. They're off in the corner. Yep. We kind of went through the process of going through the questions and helping. So we worked on that last week. So the, the process on the day of the interview, uh, just to, just so you know, again, we'll find out if we can be in the auditorium and have the candidate there or not, or uh, spread out. But, uh, but right now, I'm pretty sure it's Zoom. Um, the public has a link just like they did tonight. So, so you will be invited. And, and I'm not sure how Bill is going to set this up. If we have to, if we have six candidates, do we have six separate Zooms? I'm assuming. Uh, so we'll probably have to do, well, he's got some homework too on that. And, and then the, uh, the audience will be able to view it. They will not have communication directly to you uh, during that time, but it does have to be an open process. Uh, we're, I've worked with Barb. Uh, she's going to uh, have all the postings. So all of these are open meetings. So you have to post all of these meetings, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's open. And, and so I guess, um, uh, that's part of that uh, the information that big sheet about you have to be a little bit careful about what you're saying because everybody is uh, open so especially when doing the six um, you don't want to say well this is our guy uh, because everyone if it's on tape all the candidates could go and watch the other candidates and then if they hear the board deliberating oh they've already decided on this guy and they might be a finalist for you uh, you know, so you have to be just kind of careful on, on uh, you know, you look at, you state the facts. So we like this about this candidate, negative here, positive there, those things go through them, and then, then you'll make your decision on who you're finalizing. So you, you have to be uh, open and honest, but yet sometimes uh, hearing too much about, hey, this is our guy and we've got to get this guy, uh, not because not all board members might feel that same way about that candidate. So. We'll, we'll talk more about the, the process when we get that and help guide through that when we're, when we're doing it. So is there any questions on, on anything? I, I didn't have, I think that pretty much ran through that report that I had. Uh, if, if everyone's reviewing the questions, um, I, I think the process is well on its way. Uh, Brian and Rudy and, and Derek, uh, we've gone through all the questions together. We've gone through a lot of these processes together. So they're learning uh, through, through all of this too. And, and uh, they've had good additions to, to the questions. I seem to recall there's a list of things that we're not able to say during our meetings in regards to the candidates and their information. Can, can we get a list of that prior to that meeting? It's in that link. So if you go to that Friday report, um, and, and if you look at, uh, let's see, it's in the April 20th uh, work session agenda. It's PR superintendent information. That is all there. And, and I will also send that as PDF. So yeah, it's, uh, there's a long list of do's and don'ts, isn't there? Yes. We should be able to just click on that, right? Yes. If, if you are in the live document, you can click right on it. If you're in the PDF, it won't work. But if you're in the Google Doc, you can. Greg, Brittany, and Brenda, I would highly recommend looking through that. Yeah, I, I, I see it. I just I click on it. I clicked on it. I got a little window. I clicked on that. Oh, what? Edit link? Never mind. All right, I think I got it. Yep. Open link. All right. Yep. Diamond there. 
gives us all the information on what we should say and not say. Yeah, it's it's eight pages long. There's there's a lot of stuff in there, but it's got some good hints on how to process your thoughts. And so so when we pick, so when we go through the six candidates and we're sitting there at the end of the day, uh, you know, you're going to hear comments from your administrators. You're going to hear comments from uh, the other group, and then you're going to deliberate on your own. And then we have to sit here and, as a group. Okay, who do we pick? And really, what they're suggesting is all right. Uh, call out the herd a little bit, if you will. Is there someone who's obvious that we would not move to the next level? So you sort of get um, get down to the the two or three. Like I said, it's when there's three you with six board members, you can really split up your vote. So I, I would take the time to really deliberate hard to, to get it down to the two. Um, and uh, that, that would be my suggestion. So, but it's, it, it takes work. You got some homework coming up right now, uh, but uh, I think it's a fairly short timeline. So we should get it done uh, uh, fairly soon. And, and the goal here would be is a, a July one hire but, you know, with the times the way they are where kids aren't in school and things going on, I'm, I'm wondering if there can't be some arrangement where that person would, uh, you know, spend some time, some hours with the admin group and, and uh, me, me passing the baton off here uh, sooner than later so that other person can get in, uh, in sync with your, your admin and, and start meeting people. And then the finalist questions, uh, do we move on to that, Jerry, or do you have something else? You know, those are, I guess, the same same thing. Uh, I, I think the board should review those um, in, in the same timeline. I guess I was thinking we were talking about both groups. I'm sorry. Okay. The, the only thing that uh, I kind of took out, a lot of times, a lot of times in your, in your finalists, you you give the candidates a question or and, and make them give a presentation to you so you can see how they can uh, form their thoughts articulate uh you know speak to you um but we i could talk with john's people and, it, and it's a two-day turnaround is very difficult so if you're going to give us the vision for the next five years on what you'd be doing and um it, it'd be pretty hard to turn around a really good uh presentation so I think we these questions and the finalists I, I think are meatier there's some um, there's a lot about school board and and um, superintendent relationships um, you know specifically to the PR job Pelican job is human resource question um, you know we yeah so they they just seem to be a little uh, your first round is more uh, general education and and give, getting their character and their leadership their vision and this one really, I think, uh, you know, really uh, goes deeper, I guess would be the best way to say on the candidate. On the finalist round, would we ever let them see the questions like 10 minutes before they interview just to go over and collect their thoughts or do we just start uh, from scratch or fire them off when they get here? You know, in, in Fergus, they, they just put the questions right in front of them. They they give them they give them all the questions. Uh, so uh, that that is a personal preference. Uh, what what you want to do? Any thoughts? Or? My preference to lay it on them the last second. I mean, just just to maintain some consistency, unless we're absolutely super accurate with regard to given questions before. And I don't know, unless I misunderstood your your thought or John, nope. did I misunderstand that? Nope, nope. I think you got it correct. So I mean I don't know how to regulate it, but Jerry, you said that does happen or did you say it doesn't happen? Well, they get the questions as they sit down to be interviewed. They don't get them prior right. to the interview. Right. Gotcha. It, gotcha. it does happen. That's what, that's what I Yep. Okay. No, I'm good with that. I'm sorry, good with what? Which which way? No, just fire them off as soon as I sit down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. 
And then how long uh, would each uh, second uh, finalist be? Same time frame or allocation of time? You know, I think, I think we're looking at that uh, hour and 15 still and then a 15 minute break. So it gives you, a, it gives you some leeway. Uh, you can go 15 minutes longer or maybe 10 minutes longer. Um, but, it, but I think that's a lot of time. I think um, some other things you need to tie when you get down to the two, you know, how are, you know, site visits, um, to be honest, I've, I've never been, been a big fan of the site visit. Um, I think you can do a lot by making connections with people you know. So I think when we get down, let's just say it's the two, uh, Board members, who do you know that you can contact about this candidate in that community? Uh, admin can start talking to people. And, and so we just need to start um, uh, figuring out this person uh, who, who, isn't sit, who isn't named as a reference that could give you an honest opinion about the, about the candidate. So we need to do some research there. I typically like to have the references done prior to the finalist interview. So, so that way, when you go and you select your person, you want to be able to start negotiating with them and hiring them. You don't want to be waiting around to see, oh, we better make sure they check out. Um, and that's not, a, you know, that's um, the background report. I'm not talking about that. I'm just making sure that you know who you're hiring and is it the person that you want. So, so Monday. Tuesday will be a busy day. Uh, Tuesday, I guess it's the 12th, and, and Wednesday before they come in, making sure that we know who these candidates are and are they, are they what they're presenting themselves to be, and, and are, they, are they the next uh, superintendent for Pelican Rapids? So if we do references and uh, do a little backgrounding before they do their second round of interviews, um let's say you do some backgrounding and there's a few things that you know don't look as favorable at what point do you bring that into the conversation as far as okay you know after you do after you do your second round and then uh, when you're starting to collaborate with your other board members then you go over this is what i found in the background or checking references or when do you bring that into the equation uh interesting when you're on camera isn't it uh you know and they're recording it uh i i would say when you're deliberating so like if you have your six um so you're, you're talking about your six candidates on may 11th you're at the end of the day i think you need to bring forth that uh you know i've been contacted by this uh, you wouldn't say the name obviously uh, but there's concerns about this candidate regarding this uh, and, and bring it forth. So, so definitely, I, you know, before you decide on your finalists, you, that information should come forward. The, the first round of finalists, you do it before check references or would you do it before? Um, the, I don't, I don't think you're, faster. you know, I, I think we could do some checking on this. Are you talking about the semifinalists, the six people? Yeah, that or when's the best time to check the references and go that route before the sixth interview or before the you know we're gonna you know the admin team and I and it's, we're gonna know a lot about the six is what I'm guessing uh, so we we can do some checking on that but I think uh, for the most part I I think when you get down to the two um, so I I would I would wait until you get get to the two and just do. Uh, quick checks. People are usually, um, they avoid your questions. Uh, they're, they're afraid of lawsuits and all that happy stuff. Um, so, so I don't think you're going to get much about uh, the reference. It, it's, it's almost best if you, you have some uh, teachers who know other teachers in, in those school districts, uh, other administrators. You might know a board member, you know, you do some checks that way probably gets you more information than, than the actual references. Makes sense.
think of anything else regarding this. So basically we look at uh, kind of just doing a what's over with the questions, get back to Jerry before early next week. And then as applications come in, we'll get them by PDF and we'll screen them by letter number and then fill out the survey. And then uh, May 4th, we'll kind of cruise and uh, mull over the finalists. Just kind of trying to summarize all this. So that that, that is correct. So on on May fourth, we're talking about candidates. The letter we we can't bring the names in at all. So no one will know. So if someone's watching this, no one will know who candidate A is, B is, whatever, other than you as board members, because you'll have the file um, and and uh, the admin team. But uh, if someone's watching that, they shouldn't be able to pick on pick up that it was this person from this community type thing. So, um, yep. And then, then we give them the courtesy. Then the next day or that evening, we start making calls already and setting up interviews. And then there'll be a press release uh, to the paper stating these are the candidates that are being, uh, that have been selected to be semifinalists for the position. Here's what they're currently doing, a brief bio, you know, Here's their name. Here's the district they're at. Uh, that type of thing. So it's uh, it's pretty brief. Um, can we go over now. Who do we think should be on the school group, or should we let Brian and Derek and Rudy come up with? Uh, the good no, I, I think uh, I think if you have a suggestions, that would be good. And then uh, do we let one of our uh, uh, high school students uh, on the school board partake in this too? Certainly appropriate. It is or isn't? Is. Is? Okay. Brian and Derek, do you have people in mind for that group? For a student? For the staff. staff. For the staff, yeah. You know, I think we talked about uh, talking with the union president and then uh, for teaching staff to gather a couple teachers and then uh, talking to our non certified rep, talking about getting some non certified involved. Kind of their leaders, talking to the leaders and then going that route. That sounds appropriate to me. This is Greg, so I defer to admin on that. Brittany, any thoughts? Would one of our school board rep students be interested yeah. in something like this? I think it would be good to talk to them too. Um, we'll just see those two things around the board. Mm -hmm. Energy, so I think it would be good to ask both of them. Jerry, talk to you guys are representing the community. Oh, that's right. Talk to all the folks. Also, worry about having too much input. Right. Yeah. It just muddies things sometimes, slows it down. You know, I have a, a statement that we give to the community members uh, or that, that group, uh, you know, really stating their role. And I'll probably, you know, if they're going to meet at eight o'clock, I'll probably jump in that Zoom as well and kind of explain, you know, this is their role and, you know, looking at positives, negatives of each candidate. Uh, you are not the decision maker here, you know, just reminding them that. And, and they understand it. They just, they appreciate the input uh, that they can uh, Help uh, help find the new person coming in. So I think they, they'll be good. Typically, you get lots of good info from that type of group. Um, think of anything else relating to the hiring process, or I think we're good for now. Hey, what, one just clarification because I'm having a little trouble hearing Greg Larson here again. I, my thought was 
my position would be for the board to defer to administration with regard to staff certified and non-certified but i'd i'd like the board my position would be to suggest that the board look into the community members is that what was discussed i'm sorry if that's what was discussed and i may have misunderstood it yeah we kind of discussed that and uh gary kind of mentioned made a reference that you know we're, we are the community or we're elected by the community um i guess what are your thoughts or do you think we have a good candidate to have a good pulse that would be good for this or do you think it'd slow the process down or muddy the water or we got too many people involved already i don't know what, what are your thoughts greg that, and you're talking about having one community member well that was an idea i mean nobody's really come up with anything there otherwise we are the community members Okay. So I wouldn't need anybody else. All right. All right. I, I get that. Yeah. I uh, I was thinking uh, there were multiple community members. That was my misunderstanding. So I'm good. I'm good with uh, if if the majority of the board's perspective is to not include a community member because we're serving them as elected officials. I'm good with that. Okay. In an effort, to, in an effort to make the process more efficient, if, if I understood that correctly. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree with you there too, Greg. Yeah, I, I think we're still trying to honor that that ten. You know, uh, I'll have to find out again. Like I talked about, is if your groups can be more than that, but I think that was the recommendation. So, so if you have buildings and grounds and food service and a couple teachers and a couple paras, uh, it it leaves you room for a couple. So if the school board does have uh, people that that uh, should be invited that'd be very appropriate to email text uh, one of the admin team that would be great sounds good and then should we move on to one more thing that uh, there's a memo you would uh, uh, put out for staff on the Google Docs uh, that was uh, Brian and I were working on that um, Really, uh, I, I think the uh, confusing part for staff might be, I'm the interim superintendent and name, and, and then, but what's, what's an acting administrator? And, and also a little bit to introduce myself. So that was sort of the memo that uh, Brian was gonna finish off and, and send out tomorrow. And I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Brian talk if that's what he's thinking too. Yeah, I think that would be good. Exactly yep, we can't hear you, Brian. Oh, no, I think that would be good that uh, email that out to staff so we communicate what's going on and kind of how we're moving forward. Yep. Is, was that okay, John? Was that? Yeah, yep, yep. Okay. I think that's a good idea. And I guess I don't have anything else. You guys, Jerry, do you think anything else before we wrap it up? No, no I'm, uh, I think we got a lot accomplished tonight. I appreciate your work on this. Um, so just uh, for your homework then is to review those questions and get back to, get back to me and, and then I'll, uh, hopefully I'll be sending you uh, quite a few emails here in the near future with the candidates. Okay. Appreciate your help, your legwork with us. Oh, good. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you. Greg, do you have any questions before we wrap it up? Close? Nope. Uh, Brittany? Not in your head. Anne? Not in your head. Okay. Brenda? Mike? Okay. Well, I don't think we need a motion to adjourn. We'll just adjourn. So. Here we go. Argument. Uh, you guys have a good night. Thanks. All right. Thank you thank much. You. Yep. Thanks.